Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech TV interview. I'm joined today by Hendrik Witt. He is the Chief Product Officer at TeamViewer. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. We're in Perth right now for the uh, TeamViewer event. It was on yesterday, and we learned all about the industrial metaverse. But look, Hendrik, it was great to see the presentation yesterday. Uh, I've recorded it in full. It'll be made available to people alongside this video in the article that I'm doing. And you gave a great presentation also at the Collision Conference on the industrial metaverse, which I'll link in as well. But uh, for those who want to know, what is the industrial metaverse and when did it truly start emerging? That's actually a good question. So, so for me, the industrial metaverse is really, is really a different version of the, let's say, what I say, the classical metaverse, which is usually an all virtual experience with humans and things, everything happening in the virtual reality being kind of an extension of our social lives. Um, the industrial version for me is a much more realistic blend of reality and digital world where where you still remain in the real world yet you get kind of em empowered and enabled with additional digital information which is obviously like like the name implies in particular relevant if you are working for example in in a real world um, setting uh, like usually happening in industrial um, businesses now, uh, TeamViewer, I remember, it was uh, promoting and advertising TeamViewer Pilot. So what's the short version of, that, of what that was? Well, TeamViewer Pilot was TeamViewer's first, let's say, journey into the augmented reality and into the metaverse space. It was a pilot program, right? Well, it was kind of a pilot <laughs> program, if you will, like the, like the name indicates, mm. or maybe even hints mm. uh, nowadays from today's perspective. So what Team Your Pilot um, was, and actually still is, uh, we, we kind of rebranded it to Assist AR um, today. It is, it is kind of, a, you see what I see, remote support uh, video calling session. From the you camera know. on your phone. From the camera on your phone, exactly. And what it, what it gives you in addition to, let's say, a traditional video phone call mm. is you can have sticky augmented reality annotation. So you can use your phone and, you know, draw certain things, errors into the air, literally, and, and they stick there. And that is of tremendous help when you are in a support scenario because you can indicate, um, please check the valve here and, and draw a cycle or whatsoever. So um, that was the first attempt um, of us, you know, going into the metaverse space and it was tremendously successful. People um, are using it, um, obviously also thanks to the power of smartphones, mm. um, where there is increasingly more capability around these augmented reality type of um, scenarios and yeah. applications. But you also now today have TeamViewer Frontline. So what is TeamViewer Frontline and how has artificial intelligence and augmented reality merged to become much more useful to the industrial metaverse that uh, is now a reality and has been for the past few years, as you'll explain shortly. Yeah, so Team Your Frontline right now is, is truly a productivity solution suite powered by augmented reality technology for really enterprise applications, right? Um, uh, sometimes I refer to it as something similar like the Microsoft Office, but really for the frontline worker. Mm. So what I mean by that is Team Your Frontline is, is a suite of solutions um, ready to be used almost out of the box, still configurable um, for various different use cases along the industrial value chain. So for example, we have solutions um, in place for supply chain logistics. We have solutions in place that facilitate the manufacturing process of whatsoever thing that you're manufacturing as an enterprise. But it also has, once something is assembled, it has inspection and maintenance capability solutions in that. And for sure, obviously, it still has the original Team Your Pilot idea mm -hmm. in there, which is now our X Assist solution. It's, it is really the same thing, but it is much more leveraging now the capabilities of smart glass technology. Because compared to Pilot um, back the days, which is predominantly used on phones, mm -hmm. Team Your Frontline is predominantly used on smart glasses. Smart glasses that allow you to free up hands during you know, work procedures, which is of tremendous support, obviously, and help um, for the frontline workforce out there. Yeah, so that I'm, is in a nutshell what Team Your Frontline yeah. is. 
as you described, I mean, the, the frontline worker has been the one to miss out on digitization. You know, they can't work from home. They've got to be in the field, in the factory, in the warehouse, you know, in the, in the workshop. And this gives them, as you said, hands-free ability to be able to change your part, but get instructions live in their field of view, get uh, in diagrams showing you how to remove a difficult part. And if you need live help, you can be connected to somebody via video. And even if they're in Germany in the BMW factory, as an example, speaking in German, they can all be live translated back into your language or Thai or whatever it might be. So uh, tell us a bit more about some of the use cases and when was the first industrial metaverse customer or who, who were some of the first customers to take this on board and use te TeamViewer's technologies? Well, the first customers really, uh, you know, took on the, the TeamViewer pilot product, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Um, typically, that was customers, existing customers from the TeamViewer customer base that were leveraging that for their, for example, IT support cases and data, uh, data centers, for example, mm -hmm. right? Where, where there was, for example, 4i principles of some maintenance activities in, in, the, in, the, in the data centers. So that was one of the first. And then as we look more into the TeamViewer frontline product, it was, it was not necessarily, let's say, quote unquote, only the, um, the remote support um, aspect powered by augmented reality. Mm. There we actually had tremendous success in the logistics space. So for example, cases like um, order fulfillment in the warehouses, uh, right? Think about an Amazon, think about a DHL, think about mm. all the different companies out there that, that run warehouses. It's all about kind of you know guiding um, the order pickers to the right location in the warehouse, making sure they pick the right items, put them in a bin so that then somebody else can later ship them right to the customer and customer is happy because he actually received what he was um, buying online, for example. So that is the use case uh, um, that was um, very well picked up, and it was also due to the fact because what you what you just mentioned. Um, Frontline workforce, you know, was well, you could even argue overlooked for quite some part time mm. by digitalization um, initiatives, right? And and so so was it also with um, the order pickers in the warehouses, right? They usually are running around with either still pen and paper, can hardly imagine, but it's the, it's the reality. Yeah. Um, or they go with a uh, handheld clunky, device, clunky handheld scanners. Yeah. Which, which is almost like a, a fitness studio exercise mm. if you're doing this and carrying this guy um, eight hour shifts long. And then you can imagine what, what that ch means uh, in terms of a change of the work process. If you just put on a slick smart glass device, eventually less than 100 grams in weight, um, and it keeps your hands free so that you can really work and, and you know pick up the various different items. So that's kind of a game changer for that industry. And that was why organizations like, for example, DHL, Daimler, now nowadays called Mercedes-Benz, so the automakers, uh, were picking up, literally picking up that piece of technology fairly quickly and fairly early on, being really one of the early adopters in that space. And uh, the technology is giving you information in your line of sight. It's not blocking it off like VR does. It's voice control or touch or gesture controlled. And there were ring scanners to uh, scan uh, the barcodes and QR codes. I mean, those are some of the demos that you can see from the video that I took yesterday and also the one from the Formula One uh, GP timeframe when TeamViewer was, was here last. Um, but uh, can you tell us a little, little bit more about the Vuzix, Realware and the HoloLens headsets that you've got the TeamViewer software working on? Yeah, sure. Look, uh, there, there's so many headsets right now out there. Not all of them, though, are, you know, really set up for enterprise type of use cases, mm -hmm. various different reasons. Think about durability, you know, rigidization, all these type of things matter. And like you mentioned, music's real devices, I mean, it's full-blown computers, actually, right? They have everything. They, they have compute, they have, you know, connectivity, um, they 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 Microphone, work perfectly speakers. with uh, prescription microphone. All that stuff is there. So so it, it allows you to come up with various sorts of software applications around those devices. That being said, um, there is not the the number one device in the market uh, because it really depends on the use case, right? One of the most frequently asked questions is really, what is the best device? There is not the best device. There might be the best device, the most suitable device for a certain scenario, 
um, that you're interested in. But there is is, is not going to be the, the one and only device out there, which I think is good news because that also tells you that you can really tailor the entire metaverse setup, if you will, from a hardware perspective to your individual business needs, right? Which, which is important for most of the customers out there. And as the Vuzix uh, salesman or representative was explaining yesterday, the headsets are infinitely customizable. There's little batteries, bigger batteries. If you need you know, long shifts, you can have battery that clips to your waistband that were available to work in high heat, high humidity. Uh, they, they enabled you know, video calls right down in the bottom of mines as long as your network was able to deliver that. So as you said, this is not in two years or five years, this is today. People can implement this right now. I mean, how many companies, I mean, I see tra on, te on LinkedIn, TeamViewer has been to trade shows all around the world talking about this. You were at Collider giving a great presentation on this. The market must be still wide open for companies who need this form of industrial digital transformation for their frontline workers, which it it's must all be happening finally now. I couldn't agree more. Alex. I mean, it, it's 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 really the case, right? Mm. We're in the very still in the very early days mm. of of that industrial metaverse paradigm, if you will, right? So, and um, like the way Team Your Front Life, for example, is set up, right? It is really supporting industrial value chain processes. It is not necessarily going super deep and vertical just into one industry. Let's pick one, the automotive industry or so. No, because it is really supporting value chain processes, it is almost um, useful for each and every one. So, so there is tremendous potential in that market, both from a team viewer frontline perspective, but from the industrial metaverse uh, perspective in, in general, I would argue, right? It, it's gonna be, from my perspective, this is the next computing part paradigm, right? We're currently still, let's say, in the mature phase of the mobile paradigm. For sure, the next decade is gonna be wearable. And this is why you're in Perth, there's lots of oil and gas and mining and warehousing logistics. I mean, it's an industrial, uh, there's a big industrial base here, and that's one of the reasons why you're here in Perth, aside from the fact that you're Manchester United's new major sponsor and they've got a match here on later today. That's correct, that's correct, yeah, that, that's one. Uh, answer to it, but yeah. it's really because there's so many organizations here that, that can benef benefit from that piece of technology. So therefore, I'm more than happy you know, to spend the time um, over here. So what's next for the industrial metaverse? I mean, there must be some new features on TeamViewer Frontline. You probably can't mention them, but perhaps you can hint at them. Well, it's actually good news. Um, I would say, you know, the current, the current solution, the current capabilities are already massive. Right in terms of what customers can really get out of these. That being said, you're right. Obviously, we're not stopping. Right, we're constantly innovating on the Team Viewer Frontline product front. Um, I cannot speak about everything coming. Mm. What I can say though is, uh, you know, lots of things that we're going to introduce sooner than later is, is going to do um, with with data. So. Um, we want to provide organizations, let's say, more transparency on their operational data. Um, so that's, that's certainly an area, and it's probably also fair to say that part of that is, is going to be around artificial intelligence technology mm -hmm. that we're going to introduce more and more. Um, you know, we've been recently introducing what we call AI Studio, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a tool inside the frontline platform that allows even the non, uh, you know, artificial intelligence expert or even the non-IT expert to really train systems so that they can leverage, for example, the power of image recognition or object recognition without writing any line of code or any technical knowledge around, you know, artificial intelligence um, type of algorithms or solutions. So, which is which is clearly you know, also hinting the way we will further develop Frontline, it's really gonna be for the business user. It's, it, it's not necessarily meant to be, you know, a, a tech tool where you need to uh, go through computer science research and studies and whatsoever. No, it's, it's really for the business user that has the business know-how and that really wants to bring their business knowledge alive in, in a metaverse um, setup. It's evolving into the operating system for the industrial metaverse. You could think of it maybe yeah. like this, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's probably reasons why we called 
you know, the client that runs on the smart glasses um, frontline workplace. So I really envision it to be the workplace of the frontline workers. So when you start work, you enter your workplace, like we log into our computers in the morning mm -hmm. and, and you're in that workspace all day long, hopefully, by some time. Yeah. Now, as we get towards the end of the interview, I always like to ask a bit about you. What's a short version of your history in the world of tech and what got you interested and excited in wearable technology? Well, I studied computer science. So uh, in early on, I really got my hands on the very first wearable computer that one of my professors brought back home from, from if I remember correctly, Carnegie Mellon University from the States. Um, so I used to study in, in, in Germany. Um, and then it was already the question, what can we do with this type of technology for the industrial enterprise space? And that kind of kept me hooked until today, I would say. That was roughly already 20 years ago. So I started off computer science, classical thing, um, spent years in research in academia, did PhD on world computing and, and uh, in particular the user interface side of, of, of those applications running on smart glasses. Um, spent years um, also in Atlanta at Georgia Tech um, on this. Then had some time in strategy and management consulting, so because I also wanted to get something else than let's say the, the engineering side of the world, want to learn more. And then I spent years in, in strategy and management consulting on various different topics. Obviously, the majority around you know tech innovation and in, in how organizations can successfully implement that. Uh, before I then founded a company called Ubimax, which was basically um, well, what team your frontline is today? Mm. Um, because um, Ubimax was um, acquired two years ago by by Team Bureau, um, because we really believe you know that that the two the strengths of the two companies combined can really make the difference in the market. So, if you will, it was really the two plus two equals five mm. type of a thing and thinking. So that was this, and and now at Team Bureau, I'm I'm responsible not only for the industrial metaphors products. But also for the traditional team viewer products, everyone knows us for right. Mm. We're, we're the most widely deployed IT remote support solution. Two point five billion devices and installations out there, so massive number, category leader. So I'm more than happy to now also bring these two elements closer together and really leverage the strengths of, of both parts of the product portfolio. Well, you're in a perfect position to do that. And what is a memory of your very first computer that you can share? Well, the very first computer, um, if I remember correctly, it was from my parents, mm -hmm. which early on, so uh, which early on bought one for their business. Mm. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, it was a Taylor Ricks computer. So um, it was it a PC with DOS? It was or? a PC. Well, it, it, I, th I think technically it was even prior to PC. Yeah. So I then also remember they also had the first IBM PCs. Uh, coming so that was where I got exposed first time to computers uh, Yeah, and then I obviously it's like everyone else I guess started as a kid playing around with that uh, And then started programming uh, at some point and then it you know And then it evolved all we'll grew from there. Yeah, absolutely yeah. And look knowing everything that you know about how advanced the industrial metaverse is today I mean for consumers. We're still waiting for that consumer metaverse, you know, which is mainly with those VR headsets how, what do you think the, you know, if you fast forward 10 years, what do you think both the industrial metaverse and consumer metaverse will be like, especially when, you know, the glasses for consumers should be as commonplace as they are becoming for uh, frontline workers, but as, as commonplace as smartphones and tablets are today, you know, if you could do a bit of crystal ball gazing. Well, um, it, I, well, let's say in 10 years from now, I really um, think uh, the industrial metaverse is going to be the standard. Uh, it's nothing new. Um, mm. I believe um, it, it will have on the consumer side more or less replaced what we currently have on our iPhones and, and smartphones in general. Mm. So it, it's going to be a natural thing. Everyone will have it. Eventually, they will not come in the form factor of a glass. So wearing on your nose, there might be other ways of mounting it or, or even uh, in the style of contact lenses, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. There are first prototypes already out there. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, this will be the point in time where truly the digital world is seamlessly blendable at least into reality. Mm. So, and, and it will become natural. 
Yeah. Uh, it will just become natural and we will just, you know, um, it, it will be not a different world. Like right now, we, like you said, the, the metaverse today, you, you access it by, by a virtual reality headset, which mm -hmm. basically blocks out reality. I guess I go further down the road um, in 10 years from now, what, what we have in the industrial metaverse is probably going to be the metaverse in the future for both consumer and, and businesses of all sizes. Yeah, you'll need it to survive in the world. It's like when people had uh, the, if they didn't have a smartphone, they couldn't scan the QR codes during the pandemic to be able to go places. And probably the only people that won't be connected to the metaverse will be the Amish um, and, uh, you know, Amazonian tribes people or hermits. Everyone else will have a headset. <laughs> that, that's probably true, yeah, in some form or fashion. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So uh, as we get to really towards the end, what is some of the best advice you've ever received in life to help you get where you are today? That is a tough question. It's a tough question, but actually a good question. I still remember the person who was actually my PhD supervisor, one of my supervisors. Um, well, I, I guess it was super simple. Uh, it was probably stay focused, uh, mm -hmm. never give up. Um, since, you know, uh, also on the world computing side, I think it's a good example. Uh, me being in that space for roughly 20 years, uh, I, 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 I always hoped it's gonna be in the next three years happening, mm. the big breakthrough, and it continued like this, the hope. Uh, but it's really this never give up. You, you also have to believe in some, some form of fashion. I think that was probably the best advice uh, on, a, on a personal level, you know, for, for everything beyond business, mm. uh, but certainly also in business, that's, that's valuable for me still. Yeah, we were talking yesterday about how when you started, everyone thought it was going to be five years away or 10 years away. And here we are 25 years later, and it's just all starting to come together in a really sophisticated and mature way. And yet it's really just the end of the beginning. The middle part of this whole thing is kicking off now and really, you know, massively growing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you never give up. Uh, I mean, yes, it's true. I mean, uh, I have so many friends in the community. Uh, over the years assembled and, and whenever we come together we say this is unbelievable that we're still sitting here saying okay now it's going to happen in the next two years <laughs> and, and this is I don't know the 10th anniversary of us meeting yeah um, so uh, that that's certainly something uh, but that's also you know that's also the beauty of that of that field and topic because it's 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 highly complex and sophisticated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on the hardware side, also on the software side, bringing everything together, it will tremendously change the world, yeah. and it is already changing the world significantly today. But it's hard work to get there. Yeah, I mean, ten years ago, we just didn't have five G or the Wi Fi or sure. the batteries or the processing power that could be shrunk down into tiny SOCs. But today we have it, and it's only going to get better. So yeah, absolutely. So what is your final message for viewers and readers and for your current and future customers and partners? Well, um, I think, um, obviously, I think the metaverse is going to be part of our, all our future. Mm. I think we should all start um, thinking about it. Um, and we should, in particular, think about it, what can we do, maybe if not today, mm -hmm. then tomorrow. Um, however, already today you can do great things with that. There are so many examples out there that um, show you the tremendous value that resides in, in the, the metaverse uh, from you know tangible business KPIs perspective. Um, but I think we should always think about, you know, how could we leverage that? What would that mean for my business? Um, I think there's nothing to wait for. Everything is there um, and it will only get better over time. But it's also a learning curve for individuals as well as organizations, right? So therefore, the time is now to start doing something mm -hmm. um, and not, let's say, taking a backseat, waiting uh, until something very big is gonna gonna happen yeah. because it eventually is gonna be incremental and not the big thing. It's happening now. Well, yeah. Henrik Witt, Chief Product Officer of TeamViewer, thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best of success and I hope we can talk again in the future. Thank you for having me, for sure. Thank Looking you. Looking forward. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.